Hi everybody, this is Bruce with Zabowski Studio and today we're going to be painting these uh, barricades right here and it's a beautiful day today. I'm hoping to actually get two paintings done today, one in the evening. So I want to thank you for joining me. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another plain air adventure here. I'm uh, right in town where I live at an industrial park. I've been through this area before looking for material and finally today these uh, Concrete barriers kind of struck me with the light shining on early in the morning. It's about, I don't know, 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, working on an 8 by 10 panel, quarter inch. And this one's toned uh, quite darker than I normally go. Doesn't matter. It's, you know, I try different, different tones to uh, paint on. And I had it in the studio and I threw it in the box. I keep it in the car with uh, different size panels and... That's what I'm using, and it's actually working out pretty good for this composition. Kind of feeds into the tones that I'm going to be using, and uh, helps facilitate painting the paint the subject. So I'm sketching with burnt umber and just some turpentine at the moment. I will be again using uh, some liquid impasto gel later on in the process, and just kind of really kind of looking at the one angle in relation to another shape, that sort of thing. You'll see me shortly uh, measuring with the brush. And you would think uh, people probably will comment, well, if the lines don't converge to two different objects, they should be going to the same vanishing point. And it depends. This ground is not level. It goes straight in one direction, then raises up like a, probably if you were to draw a straight line, probably about a foot off the ground and sometimes two feet because it undulates across the landscape. So the objects are going to sit on different uh, planes and go to different vanishing points, potentially. you just got to observe. If I just compare one shape to another, it'll kind of draw, draw itself out. And I might even sometimes, if it's not too cartoony looking, I'll uh, adjust the perspective to give a little energy to the painting. So just got to use your judgment. Basically make it a painting. Here I am kind of scrubbing in some tone to get the shadows set before they change too much and I really like how I got that everything placed on the panel in such a way that that corner of that shadow blows off the edge of the panel it's a nice effect I like it a lot and the tone looks a little light that's because the sunlight's bouncing off me and into the surface you see the reflection there and sorry a little bit of a bad angle with the camera I'm thinking I might have should have shot from my left hand side but I'm left handed so I don't want to get in the way with the painting process. I'll experiment with that. And here I'm just taking some paper towel rubbing out a little bit so I can set up tack up a little bit before I get to the uh, color layers scrubbing in the shadow side of the barriers and you'll see over time I'm not going to be Super exact with the barriers uh, at this point. I always take my plein air work and revisit it when I get home away from the subject to see how I can improve it or some I just scrap. Uh, we all know how that goes. Just kind of getting angles. And don't forget you can always clean up edges as you paint the color around the object. So you can go back and forth. And using uh, approximately a half inch, three eighths to a half inch uh, hog bristle brush, filbert. Or I believe it actually was a flat in the beginning, but I've had it for a while. <laughs> kind of rounded off the corners. Again, blocking in, getting the, some form going to the, to the drawing there. And there you can see. Of course, when I'm painting, but also, of course, I have the inset photo again. I, I think that's very useful for you guys to let you see what I'm looking at when the item is not in frame of the camera. So I try to shoot different vantage points of the painting, give you a little different look from a distance to kind of uh, simulate like you might be stepping back looking at your piece as it's coming along to detach yourself a bit so you can be a little more objective. Now going back over that initial layer. 
Could I have just gotten that darkness right from the get-go? Sure, probably. But it's okay. It actually kind of was setting up, uh, sinking in or a little bit more than I thought it was going to. Now this is where the fun begins. I've uh, made it a point because you're, I'm going to have rim lighting on top of those barriers to put the dark against the light, light against dark to really try to make them pop. So in some a uh, lot of parts of the background I'll be just intuitively making up the background to support the main actors in, in this piece which are the two concrete barriers and everything else kind of serves into that. Not too concerned with really drawing anything out. I'm just suggesting some dark spots of color design wise and then I'll turn them into suggestions of shapes of urban decay and you know like yeah, as you can see in the background, there's slabs of concrete from some construction project just laying over there. I'll select a few of those out to uh, feed the design a bit in the background. Trying to get some angles going. Now you can see I got some uh, rim lighting on. And what I did with that rim lighting is I kind of tested it in the spot first to see if it was too light or dark or if it was too chromatically strong so then I arrived at what I wanted now I'm working on the light tone of the concrete barrier and you can see right along the edge where the very sunlit edge meets the side it's going to be quite not heavy duty dark but darker Just trying to get some variations in color in the shadow so it's not just and some variety of strokes to suggest texture and stains and that sort of thing. I like painting the urban subjects because, of course, I just like straight lines and. Uh, pieces of shape, or, I really get into that when I'm painting, so I didn't think I was it was really going to turn out. I mean, when I started the painting, I'm like, I think this will be good. I don't know. I'll try it out. I've never done this before, but I really, really liking it. Just simple subject. And I could see, like, doing a little series of a construction site or, or close and cropped in sort of things of uh, construction related equipment to suggest buildings and things of that nature. See how it goes sideways strokes and vertical strokes breaking up sometimes the whole thing sometimes not. Like I'll break up a horizontal stroke or a vertical with a horizontal <clears throat> just shake it up a bit now just getting that little bit of dark that I was talking about earlier you know you don't have to be a slave to this subject you know you can pull out the qualities that you like the best it all depends on what your goals are when you're outside uh, plain air painting. Working on the form more. I'm going to try to get a little too light there. Starting to get competition with the highlight. So it's something to be aware of when you're you can play around with the highlight having more chromatic, more stronger color to separate it from the shadow side by having that be more grayed down. Could be a potential way to handle uh, closeness in the edges there. Basically just going over the umber value sketch that I did 
And again, I hope you guys are enjoying the inset pictures I've learned how to do. I think that helps to show the view of the scene with the, the zoomed in camera on the painting. And just a few seconds ago, you saw me holding up the brush. That's, that's a close up of the size of the brush I'm using pretty much for this whole painting. Use three brushes, the round one to um, sketch it in, and then this hog bristle to scrub the paint around. Then you'll see I use a little detail brush. I think it was a two or a zero. I can't remember. To do some other little details coming up later. If you like the content of what you're checking out here in the, in the videos and really feel like you're learning a lot, let me know so I can... Uh, you know, it's it's important that we as creators, uh, you know, I like to paint a lot of different subjects, but sometimes people, well, I, you know, they don't tell you, but they don't want to see maybe a certain subject. They'd rather see some other content. And that helps me develop uh, the best videos I can for you guys. So let me know what you think, or if you like the variety. I personally like to paint different things. I don't, I might go through a stretch painting, you know, some, a stretch of urban things or some still life it depends maybe on weather keeps me indoors I work in still life or that sort of thing just as long as I'm moving forward with my art now here I am put in the dark some darker shadows really helps pop off that shadow side of the barrier you start to really see the form crystallize and the, the effect of it coming into space coming at you I'm actually thinking I might do another revisit the spot, see what else. They have these really cool things there. They're like the uh, big steel plates with the tubular bars in between them. I think they put them in like trenches so that when they're, when they're digging on construction sites so the walls don't cave in. And they have those just kind of laying on the ground. And so depending on how you crop in, you can really get some interesting compositions. So a little distant view of me working so you can see from a distance what the painting looks like with the scene in it. Even though you got the inset picture obviously, but seeing it kind of together helps sometimes. And sometimes interesting when I set up the paint, especially in a I thought this road was going to be actually quite quiet on a Saturday, but I forgot that there's an Elks Lodge around the corner, so some activity going on there, I guess. And uh, not a lot of traffic, but sometimes you get a little nervous. You're setting up painting, you got this tripod with a camera filming, and feeling a little out there, so to speak. Uh, people drive by probably wondering what the hell you're doing, but once you start painting, once I start painting, I just get in my little zone and. Nobody else exists. Still working on the shadows there. If any artists out there watching this, uh, if you do urban paintings, I'd like to hear kind of techniques that you might use for certain uh, features in the urban landscape. Always intrigued to read about those or see a video on them or one of the artists I really like watching on YouTube for urban subjects is uh, of course everyone probably knows him James Gurney he's really good and actually I'm gonna be trying in some other urbans that I plan on doing of uh, how, how he James Gurney uses a ruler to uh, get some perspective lines in as I just lightly to sketch in some lines I might attempt to try that with some uh, certain subjects now here I am applying just textural elements in the shadow little different values to give form to the shadows always try to keep like three values you know your dark your midtone and your light at least to really kind of give some uh, shape to your forms and then you can nuance that, break it down more in value.
just little flicks of paint here and there. And you'll hear at the end of the video what uh, I'm using for a palette, so stick around for that. Oh, excuse me. So stick around for that. Now here I am just picking out some little elements I was telling you before about slabs of concrete back there in the distance. Not using them all. And right now they just look like little flat rectangle blocks rather than chipped concrete and stuff. But I'll work on that uh, it, when I bring the painting back home. I'm more focused about really getting the information I need for the foreground barriers. But I just want to get some things in there. And one thing that I saw after everything was done, I brought it home, is that second barrier where I'm doing the uh, concrete slabs behind it to set off the rim lighting. I'm going to extend those behind the corner just a bit because I don't like how they just go into that barrier and don't come out the other side. So that overlap is going to help feed the sense of uh, depth in the painting. So sometimes you get too concentrated on what your your focus is and it's important to to at the time take the time to study other parts see how they're developing we're not perfect what do you know we do the best we can just as long as we notice it later at least and that's okay i'm not always necessarily going out playing our painting looking to do wow i finished this piece and i'm going to put it in the frame i usually get them going about 85% and like to bring them home and study them and pick them apart and build on them. But at least I have the tones I saw in nature. Helps me learn how to really see that. And you can see how the background of the board is really facilitating the overall tone I'm getting to the piece. And uh, because they don't want it too blue, blue grays that you kind of might, uh, might see in this photo here. I might play into some of those in the shadow side of the barriers to bring out some cool parts of coolness. Because I do think it needs that. Now here I am with that detail brush I was talking about. I'm creating the little chips of paint and such. And... I apologize. I zoomed in as much as I could. This iPad's not the greatest for, even though it says it's shooting high definition. Uh, obviously, you need to eventually invest in a camcorder or you know, some some better camera. But you can sort of see how I'm getting that little edges of light catching the nicks and chips in the concrete. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Doing some more with the nicks and scratches in the concrete there. And that silver thing you see flashing in front of the screen sometimes is my mall stick that I rest my hand on for detail work. And what it is is some of those metal tripods you can buy for a camera that have the telescoping legs. Well, I had one of those tripods and the head on it broke or something. And Anyway, I confiscated one of the legs because I said, wow, that's a nice collapsible mall stick. So check, you know, if you find something at a Goodwill or something, or I think it's a great idea because it's slim. I'm painting the little handles on the, the uh, you know, um, little tractor thing will pick those up and move them around and they were a lot of fun to do too I'm putting this slight little shadow all these little details really starts to help build it you can see the strokes in this in the foreground barrier in the shadow side there that kind of adds interest to to that area And what I might do to suggest, like how you have that staining going down the side of the barriers in the photo, I might experiment once this uh, painting's dry, maybe trying some glazes or something and get that feel. And right on the corners of those, when the paint's dry, I'm going to put in some nice little just bits of highlight because that's a metal iron kind of handle thing. 
and of course work on detailing out more of the uh, slabs of concrete out in the back there. Not too much. I don't want to compete. And I might try to maybe introduce some more coolness behind those slabs of concrete in the ground to suggest recession. So there's a little experimenting to do, but not everything's going to be perfect when you're playing air. As long as you're paying attention when you're painting and learning something for the next painting you do, I think is the key. And yeah, it would help. Like if you want to improve your urban paintings, well, when you go out plain air painting, do a lot of urban paintings. But I'm in different moods some days, so I tend to like to do urban paintings more on strong light kind of days. Not necessarily super sunny, but typically, typically yes, because obviously that sets off the angles and forms and all that sort of thing. And I invite you, if you're new to my channel, to subscribe to uh, get more. Just when you go to subscribe, hit that little bell icon to get notifications when I post a new video. Try to do one at least uh, once a week, once every nine days, or nine, ten days, something like that. Some weeks I might put out two. It, it depends. Just toying around a little bit with that detail brush, getting some little flicks of paint here and there. And you'll see I didn't go too crazy with it. I kind of had it in my hand and started working along edges that you see there. Then I said, wait a minute, I can't be doing this over this area. It's too noodling too much. So time to switch brushes and get that hog bristle back in there to suggest some layers. So you'll see that in a moment. Or a couple minutes. And that little area of light tone. I like it against the dark, but you can see how it's disjointed from what's around it in terms of ground. So I'll need to integrate that a little bit. See how I'm doing that now with the bristle brush? A little bit. What I really need to do is pull, you know, once I paint the slabs of concrete coming across to the other side, that's going to help a lot. I'll probably work on that tomorrow. Since I painted this today, it'll be tacked up enough because I use that liquid and pasta medium. Kind of works pretty good. You know, it doesn't, it can give you a really thick paint depending on how much you add in there. Um, I probably wouldn't overdo it. Still new product to me, so having fun with it though. Rim lighting that edge of the concrete there. Sorry for that glare off my mall stick, but you can see how I rested up against the easel there. And I'll check out the photo reference that I have, but pretty sure you know, I'll be doing the other one too shortly. Just pops it just enough. Very much an unorthodox subject matter for a painting, that's for sure, but it's okay. Now I'm going to start doing the rim lighting on this one. You'll see it in the finished painting. Working a little bit on the foreground. It's 
It's a beautiful morning. And then later on it clouded up. I wouldn't say cloudy like rain looking clouds, but definitely clouds came in. So I'm not going to be going out like I thought later on. Maine is Maine spring has been pretty uh, rainy and cloudy so far. I can't wait until it gets to be more consistent. Just uh, kind of working on a few areas. Trying to find that balance of putting in detail and keeping it loose. All right, here's the uh, palette I used. I used uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and cad yellow pale, and that's it. And then my new little gel medium, the liquid impasto gel. And these are the two brushes that I use for the whole painting. You see a little scale there. So, oh, and I did also use this brush for the drawing in of the painting and a little bit of the shadow, putting in shadows, but kind of put that to the side right off so you can kind of see a scale with my fingers there. So, just wanted to share something I saw in, a, in another painting video, and it's modifying your French easel to hold the smaller panels like I work on because. These little things are too far apart, so I just put two screws in to uh, hold the panel. And then, of course, you don't need them up there because you have that, and that works just fine. So just a little tip to modify your easel. Okay, this is a wrap. Got about an hour into it, and I'm really liking how it turned out. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Help me out. Uh, hit the like button and share with your artist friends. All right, take care. Till next time.